Welcome to the Endometriosis Nutritionist video blog. I am Anna Marika Gerritsen, but call me AMG, and I'm a qualified nutritionist. I help women and those assigned female at birth who have endometriosis to create their personal endometriosis diet to reduce the severity of their symptoms and lead a normal life. I share fortnightly video blogs on all things related to how nutrition affects your endometriosis symptoms. Let's start today's video. Hey, welcome to this very first endometriosis nutritionist video blog. Now, I, I, I know I'm supposed to say vlog, um, but um, I didn't grow up with all this and I just call it a video blog. Um, every fortnight I will post a video where I talk about something that is related to nutrition and endometriosis. And today I thought the first blog, uh, bl video blog should be about something that underpins everything I talk about, everything I, uh, th that I, all my advice and all my recommendations and how I work with my clients. So the title for today is inflammation the good the bad and the ugly now despite what you might have heard or read or been told um, it is actually inflammation and not hormones that underpin your endometriosis symptoms and also the the, the progression of your disease um, hormones do play a role um, and i'll record a separate video at some point um, where I go into more detail as to what role hormones play. So it's definitely not uh, completely separate from hormones, but they're not so much the driving force. So when I look at endometriosis as a nutritionist, that inflammation is what I focus on. And there's good, bad and ugly news about inflammation. So let's start with the ugly so we can end with the good and that definitely is good news. Now the ugly news is that endometriosis is an inflammatory disease and that you have chronic systemic inflammation. Now what does that mean? Chronic means that you have it all the time. Um, it's, it's not sort of come and go. The opposite of that is acute inflammation and you can see what that is like when you have like a cut on your hand. Um, around the cut it starts to swell, it, get, it's get, it, get, it gets red um, if, and when you touch it it feels warm to the touch. That is your immune system's response to a dangerous situation because there's um, a, a breach of this uh, defense system. Uh, and it, your immune system sends particular cells to that area and that creates inflammation and that then triggers all sorts of other processes in your body and part of that is the healing process. And then after a little while, so that's acute, and then after a little while you'll notice when you touch it, um, it just doesn't feel hot anymore, the swelling goes away, the redness goes away. Now chronic inflammation means that, that sort of that slightly um, hotter temperature, um, a bit swollen, that is there all the time. Uh, systemic inflammation means that it's everywhere. So all your organs and tissues are in a constant state of inflammation. And this inflammation is the engine behind the severity of your symptoms and the progression of your disease. So endometriosis can spread more easily when you have chronic inflammation because it, it's like the inflammation creates this this slightly if you like tropical environment where it's very becomes very easy for endometrial cells to uh, adhere and grow um, it also behind the severity of your symptoms because a lot of the symptoms that may not even be related on the face of it related to endometriosis which is a uh, you know, we, we associate that with the re reproductive system, um, but those symptoms um, have a, a basis in inflammation. So the ugly news, you have chronic 
systemic inflammation, you have an inflammatory disease. Now, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is that the inflammation is caused by some problems that you have with your immune system and your digestive system. Now, that doesn't really seem to make sense, right? That why, why, would you, why, do, why would your immune system and your digestive system have anything to do with endometriosis symptoms? Well, when your immune system is triggered, one of the key mechanisms it uses is this inflammation. And it does that by producing specific pro-inflammatory cells. So the name says it, pro-inflammatory. So they create that inflammation which in an acute um, problem is absolutely perfect. Now, unfortunately, what we do know is that women with endometriosis produce an abundance of these pro-inflammatory cells. You're doing really well there. But you it's like your, your immune system is overreacting and you're overproducing those cells. Uh, your, cell, your immune system also produces cells that remove whatever pathogens or cells um, are triggered um, and guess what your immune system does produce them but they don't function very well so the result is this chronic systemic inflammation and then another problem with your immune system is that you your body or your immune system has created these um, cells that rec that have been trained to recognize certain uh, particular pathogens or uh, invaders um, but in this case, that, that then when these cells recognize those, that, that triggers the immune system. But these cells have been trained to respond to your endometrial tissue. We call those autoantibodies. Um, and these are autoendometrial antibodies. So they respond, your immune system directly responds to your endometriosis and your endometriosis cells. So then even the fact that you have endometriosis keeps this inflammation going. So how, so how does the immune system trigger then? Um, well, partly, as I said, by your own cells, but there is also something uh, about your gut. You very likely have leaky gut or gut hyperpermeability, which means that the gut wall is damaged and it allows undigested food particles to get through the gut wall into the bloodstream. Now, these particles are not meant to be there and your immune system is triggered to fight these invaders. So that's another um, way that your immune system gets triggered. And unfortunately, when you have chronic inflammation, that inflammation also then worsens your leaky gut. So it's a vicious cycle. The second part about your gut that we need to look at is um, the fact that we know that my, the microbiome of women with endometriosis is out of balance. Simply put, you have too many of the bad bacteria and not enough of the good ones. The good bacteria play a very important role in moderating your immune response. And if you don't have enough of them, that moderating effect is not very strong. And then the bad bacteria produce chemicals or endotoxins that trigger the immune system. So that was the bad news. All right, what about the good news? Well, the good news is that nutrition can play such a strong part to improve your gut and reduce your immune response, which then reduces inflammation. So when I work with clients, the first focus is always on trying to heal the gut. And a key strategy we follow is to find out what foods that you are intolerant to and remove those from your diet. Now there is foods that almost all women with endometriosis are intolerant to, and they are gluten and they are dairy and the dairy protein. So gluten is the protein in wheat. And on occasion, uh, a client is okay with dairy and on occasion, the client is okay with gluten. But on the whole, that always comes up as, um, as an intolerance. So we start by removing those two from the diet. And in fact, um, if that's a step you would like to take, uh, I will put a link underneath with this video where you can 
um, uh, where, you, where you can uh, do a course that I have that is to re help you to remove gluten and dairy from your diet. Because it's not easy to change your diet and to just remove foods from your diet. So it's a, it helps you to do so um, step by step. So we start with the gluten and the dairy, but virtually everyone that I work with also have has additional food intolerances. And these can be two really odd, normal, health healthy foods. Of course, if you're intolerant to them, they're not healthy for you. Um, to give you an example, I am intolerant to um, apple. And if I have uh, apples every day, an apple every day, as the, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. If I do that, I have to be close to a toilet because I get terrible stomach cramps and diarrhea. I'm also intolerant to um, chickpeas, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, and lamb. Um, go figure. Um, and uh, yeah, so and I didn't know knew it didn't know this before until I got tested for it. So I definitely use testing to find out what foods you can be intolerant to. And then I realized that one of my favorite snacks is vegetable sticks with hummus. And hummus is chickpeas and sesame seeds and, and some other things. So unfortunately, um, hummus is no longer one of my favorite snack foods. Um, so it's very important to identify what those foods are because if you have, if you are intolerant to a food, every time you eat it, it irritates your gut and that that stimulates and triggers the immune system. The second focus is on improving your gut microbiome to make sure that you not only have a lot of the good bacteria, but also a wide variety of these good bacteria. And we do that through supplements and through specific foods. So keep an eye out on these videos because in a future video I will go into more detail about your immune system and in a separate one we'll also take a much deeper dive into your gut. Um, and that's an image I didn't want to put in my head but now I do have that in my head. Um, so in these videos we will start to go much deeper into anything that that your gut and your immune system have to do with inflammation um, and but I thought it was a good one to kick off with to make sure that you understand that foundation and why nutrition can play a really powerful part in managing your endometriosis symptoms just a bit of a disclaimer though there's we cannot cure endometriosis we cannot cure something that we don't know it, what it's caused by. We still don't know what's causing your endometriosis. So, but what we can do is reduce inflammation and sort of take out the fire, you know, uh, and therefore reduce the severity of your symptoms. Um, you may, some symptoms may completely disappear. Um, other symptoms may uh, be a lot less um, and become manageable. Now, you may be wondering um, about your own diet at the moment, um, and uh, there are some things that um, a lot of people just eat and drink that uh, for when you have inf inflammation and endometriosis actually makes your symptoms worse. And I have a free report that you can download and I'll put it in, it's in the link um, with this video. It's called Five Things You Eat and Drink That Make Your Endometriosis Symptoms Worse. And um, when you click on that link, you can um, you can download it and read it and see what it is you are eating and drinking that may be making your symptoms worse. And there may be some foods in there that you had not considered. Right, that's the first one done. The first video is up and running. And I'm looking forward to sharing a lot more information with you through these videos. If you enjoy the video, if you like to be notified that you that a new video is up and running, just um, subscribe and uh, click the notification um, so that you will get the notification when I post a new one. As I said, once a fortnight. Um, and if you like this video, please. Uh, thumbs up is very much appreciated 
and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye for now. If you want to learn more about nutrition for endometriosis, go to my website, theendometriosisnutritionist.com.au.